Amen. Good morning, Alfred Street. To our guests who grace us with your presence this morning, to family and friends in both overflow and connected around the world wide web. Grace and peace be unto all of you from God our Father and Jesus Christ who is our risen, our resurrected, our reigning, and our returning Redeemer. I know that the skies are a little overcast, there's a little rain falling, but this is still the day that the Lord has made. And we gather in this place to rejoice, to be glad, and to be thankful in it. It has been some kind of week for Alfred Street Baptist Church. We give thanks to God for the amazing thing that happened on yesterday. If you are not at the Gaylord, there's really no way for me to paint the picture accurately, but imagine a ballroom with 10,000 seats and not one of them be vacant as 10,000 high school students from around the nation gather together to be exposed to the work of our HBCUs, to know that thousands of students encountered hundreds of colleges, walked away with letters of acceptance, walked away with scholarship, walked away with a vision and future for their life. Can you just help me give thanks to God for the 16th HBCU Festival and the great work that God has done. Yesterday was groundbreaking for us, unprecedented to be over the Gaylord and to have that many students, and we didn't do it alone. You never arrive somewhere alone. God always has a way of partnering you with people. We want to thank God for the partnership of Thompson Hospitality, of Ernst & Young, of Burke & Herbert, of the Executive Leadership Council. And you all know that we took on a major partner this year who came to us wanting to invest in this vision with their commitment to diversity, to the recognition of the value of HBCUs, to make a commitment to aiding young people in their collegiate pursuit. We were blessed, highly favored, uh, to have a high-tech corporation, one of the greatest in the nation and the world in Facebook, and I am proud to present their head of infrastructure and public policy. He's a member of our church, he's a brother, and I love him to death, Brother Reggie McKnight, who represents Facebook, is gonna come just with a word of greeting. Reggie, if you come on forth, amen. Won't you welcome Reggie McKnight. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of everyone at Facebook, I am truly honored to be with you today. And yesterday's college festival was a moment none of us will forget. Um, Facebook is so proud to stand with the Alfred Street Baptist Church, our nation's HBCUs, and our talented young people. At Facebook, we recognize that innovation and in technology requires opportunity. And yesterday's festival was a profound example of what happens when we provide opportunity. <laughs> to my dear friend and the captain of this amazing ship, the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley, thank you for your dynamic leadership, your passion for education, and your advocacy on behalf of our young people. To the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church, Bernard Jackson and the amazing members of the HBCU committee, and the hundreds of selfless volunteers who made yesterday possible, you are a model for the nation. The work you have done with this college festival is simply amazing and is changing lives. And there are a few members of this great church that I have to call out because they were so vital to Facebook making this happen. First, let me thank Stephanie Cunningham and Beverly Luzell, who were our amazing hosts yesterday. They stood with me and about 20 people from Facebook all day and made sure all of our needs were met. So thank you so much to Stephanie and Beverly. <laughs> let me acknowledge Minister Elijah McDavid, who as always delivered such eloquent remarks to our students and showed what happens when there's opportunity for education and what our young people can be. So thank you, Minister McDavid. And let me thank April Hicks, who just runs a tight ship. 
Um, April made sure everything was in order, all of our needs were met, and we are so grateful, April, for all you did to make yesterday flow so smoothly. And finally, let me thank John Rosenthal and Carla Wellborn. I don't know what I'm gonna do next week without a text from Carla or from John, but we started this conversation last fall, and I think we've talked every week since then. They have just been amazing partners. I am internally grateful for all they did to make yesterday possible. They are true servants, and thank you so much, John and Carla. And finally, I want to thank my wife, Dr. Marlena McKnight, who's sitting in the front row today, as well as Ebony Wimbush from the church. You know, I first learned about this college festival about five years ago when Ebony invited Marlena to be a volunteer when it was still at T.C. Williams. Marlena came home and said, Reggie, you have to see what they're doing at this college festival. Now, she has a doctorate in education, so I knew she knew what she was talking about. So yesterday, I was able to experience the energy and the excitement that was sparked in her first. And I can truly say that being at the Gaylord yesterday was one of the highlights of my career and my life. In many ways, in many ways, it felt like a, a good old family reunion. You know, we, we were able to fellowship and talk to so many students and their parents. And it was so beautiful to see not just students, but families and mentors and advisors and church members from all around the country surrounding our young people. As we all know, it takes a village. So I'd like to thank mine. I am so grateful to Facebook. My Facebook colleagues' support of this festival has been nothing short of incredible. We are very fortunate to have groundbreaking leaders whose revolutionary ideas have changed the world. Those leaders recognize the immense value of our young people. On behalf of our entire leadership, our Chief Operating Officer Cheryl Sandberg sent a beautiful and heartfelt video message yesterday that we played for our students. And we had members from all over the country, from San Francisco and Seattle and Washington, D.C., that came to support the festival. I want to acknowledge one of my colleagues who's actually here today with us, Oscar Vennessy. Oscar's a, a Navy man, and he's doing such incredible work at Facebook. He's in San Francisco now, but he used to attend this church when he and his wife were in Virginia. Oscar came to support the festival. He's here today worshiping with us. And when I saw him after yesterday, I said, brother, you look, you look tired. And I know I was, because we had been up all day. And his response, I think, really encapsulates how we all feel about this stuff. So he said, I'm just so moved by this moment. He said, it's emotional for me. And I'm so proud that we're here and that Facebook is supporting this college festival. So thank you, Oscar. <laughs> At, you know, we understand at Facebook that HBCUs are vital to the fabric of America and have educated some of the country's greatest minds many of whom at a time when they couldn't go to other colleges and universities. And we're fortunate to have HBCUs in many of the places where we're investing and where Facebook have offices. So we're proud to invest in our communities and the next generation. As we stood in that grand hall yesterday, I could not help but be moved because we know so many generations have marched and fought and struggled so that we could walk through those doors. As the African proverb says, I am because we are, regardless of what positions we hold. We stand here because it's all of us. And church members and families and some of the most important civic organizations in the military were there yesterday surrounding our young people. And some of our historic sororities and fraternities were there. Step in with Pastor Wesley, I think. <laughs> and, and what that village showed and told our young people was that you are the personification of the hopes of generations. So as you pursue a college education, you stand tall. You understand in the eloquent words of Maya Angelou, I may come as one, but I stand as 10,000. 
Yesterday, I could not help but think education is not an individual act. It's a family affair. I couldn't help but think of my first time on a major college campus. I was going to visit my big brother, Rache McKnight, at a small school in Durham, North Carolina. <laughs> he was just an 18-year-old kid from Greenville, South Carolina, with big hopes and dreams. And while Rache was at Duke, he met a young man from the south side of Chicago. <laughs> and those two young men became roommates and fraternity brothers. And because of the power of education, because of the village that surrounded them, Rache is now one of the very top lawyers in this country. And Howard John Wesley is the minister of Alfred Street Baptist Church and one of the most powerful voices in this nation. I've seen the power of education so much in my own life. When my little sister left home and came back as Dr. Leela Renee McKnight Ely, one of the most powerful voices on mental illness in this country. And I could not help but think of my parents' story, who, despite growing up in poverty, picking cotton in South Carolina, were able to make it. because they had church members, they had a village surrounding them. <laughs> and because of that, they were able to go to HBCUs and achieve the American dream. So for Facebook, it's not just about writing a check. It's about making that dream possible for other generations. So all those students came yesterday with that same dream, that same dream of achieving an education. And it's those students who give us so much hope. Students like a young man I met who said, I got admitted to five, yes, five HBCUs yesterday. <laughs> and when I looked at their eyes and thought about their dreams, I could not help but see my own little boy. He was there in the front row. And he's not even two years old yet, but I know the type of world I want for him. A world that is more connected and empathetic. A world where all of our children can learn and grow without barriers. And a world that continues to unleash the power of education to improve people's lives. And because of them, because of great leaders like Howard John Wesley, because of great organizations like the Alfred Street Baptist Church, I know we will get there. So as we celebrate the 16th annual Alfred Street Baptist Church HBCU College Festival, presented by Facebook, <laughs> let us always remember that that drive to achieve more has been at the core of who we are as a people and as Americans. That determination and commitment to excellence, even in the face of unspeakable hardship, has helped us become one of the world's most educated nations. And we are still a beacon of hope today. That is not just because of where we have been, that is also our future because of caring and faithful, devoted people like you. This partnership yesterday was a great example to Facebook of why our mission to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together is so meaningful. Because when we come together and we support one another, nothing can hold us back. God bless you, and thank you very much. Enough thanks cannot be said and shared not only for what Facebook did, but also for all those volunteers. Uh, some more than 400 of you gave up your time and energy on yesterday of your heart to be certain that things went excellent, and that young people were blessed. And so if you're here today and you volunteered in any capacity, in any way on yesterday, I want you to stand and let this church just acknowledge you, all of our volunteers for the HBCU Festival. Would you stand and be recognized? Blessed to you.